What's, the, what's your film called? It's called Beach House. It's a throwback to the old 60s. You didn't? Frankie wasn't? Was it Frankie and Annette went back to the beach? Oh uh, no, it's it's a new batch. It's the because oh, I was batch. offered that. <laughs> oh, the last beach party? <laughs> that one? Was that? The I don't. I mean, when I, when I was here in um, July, uh -huh. um, Filmways asked me what I do. They wanted to make this right. beach party movie. They just seen Starstruck, and um, they said, "Would I be interested in doing this film about That's right. with Frankie and it, and it going back to the beach to see what the kids are doing today?" And I sort of said, "You know, is but is this like it's meant to be funny or straight or?" Yeah. The only way you could do that is sort of on the level of a divine movie, I think. Uh, right. <laughs> I think That's right, they are doing their reuniting I think they were them. sort of serious, you know, and they try and make them look nice and all mm -hmm. that. But, uh, <laughs> not me. You have an ashtray and a glass of water there, should you get... Oh, what do I might need? I think the makeup budget on that film would exceed myself. Which one, for Frankie or any? Yeah. You're rolling, John. I'm rolling? How did you come to make Starstruck? Well, it's a long story, will I tell it? That, 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 that. Um, I heard about the script originally when I was, after a brilliant career, and I was working on a script of my own, um, and I wanted to do something that was contemporary and that was different to um, brilliant career, but I certainly wasn't walking around saying, I will now do a rock musical in any way. And I just heard about the script through some friends of mine who knew Stephen McLean, the writer, and they said it's fantastic. So I got my agent to ring the producers and say, I'm interested, could I please read the script? And they said, no, no, she'd be the wrong person to do this film. And that was the very thing that I was trying to fight against and why I wanted to do something that was different to Brilliant Career. So um, they actually turned me down and said, no, they thought I'd be the wrong person. I make those nice, pretty period pictures. And it was just uh, through luck that I met Stephen a few months later at a party and um, I grabbed him and said I really wanted to do that you know I really would have sounded great and that's how um, he pulled a few strings and I met the producers but um, he and I basically hit it off so it was a writer that plugged for me. So then you found yourself being typed a little bit because of brilliant career into a period yeah, well, I think it was one of those things I realised that, um, I mean, something why I've always fought against, like, doing children's films. I noticed quite early on as I started making films, everyone said, oh, a woman director, you should work with children. And, like, I mean, I know nothing about children. But it was the same sort of thing. As soon as I'd done a film about a woman, every script that I was given was set in the past and about a woman trying to find herself. And I could see very easily that, that it, it might be a hard thing to break out of. And as you see, for an example, that I mean, there was already one producer saying, oh, no, no, she wouldn't be right to do a modern film. In addition to the contemporary setting, uh, did the theme of, of fame uh, seem to strike a chord there? Huh? No, I do realize that there's, that there's two similarities with these red-headed characters. Um, and I, f re I thought, my God, everyone will think I'm totally um, obsessed with ambition and, and fame. And it wasn't that at all. Um, when I originally read the script, to me it was a story about a couple from the beginning. Um, I think probably now it's finished, Jo dominates more because she sings the songs. But to me it was, it was always the two of them, the two kids. And I mean it was the comic elements and the, the whole story of the family and the chance really to probably do something with the location of Sydney that attracted me to it. How did you find uh, Joe Kennedy for the lead? Uh, we had quite an extensive publicity campaign, and she really came in off the streets. We did that, you know, we, we advertised radio on rock shows, and, s and the casting people saw hundreds and hundreds of kids, and she just heard about it through a friend. But, I mean, she'd never done any acting much before at school, and she'd sung in a band that was sort of breaking up all the time, but, you know, she was really a, only a year out of school. And the actor Ross O'Donovan, who plays her cousin Angus, uh, I Well, he wasn't an actor either. He was um, Ross O'Donovan, who was in sort of sixth form at high school, studying to be a marine biologist. What kind of approach did you take to directing uh, O'Donovan and, and the really non-actor? Well, um, the casting director and I discussed from the very beginning, um, and I did also with the producers, the risk we were taking with two very untried, inexperienced kids. But I really wanted to find two people that were a bit different. And I mean, obviously, we saw everyone that had experience first. And I just felt that they had that certain something, little something extra that I was looking for. And 
we, we planned it very carefully because we knew it was going to be a major change in their lives. Number one, they had to move cities because we found them both in Melbourne and we, we were shot in Sydney. Um, that's like moving from LA to New York. Ross had to leave home. He was still living at home with his mum and going to school. So we, we actually brought them to Sydney about three months before the shoot. And also we started them, they started having singing and dancing lessons. Um, and the plan was for them to hopefully start to get to know most of the key people on the crew. So when we came to shoot, they'd, it'd feel more like a family, that we weren't strangers. Um, and they had workshops with me every week, as well as singing classes, dancing classes, you know, voice classes, um, and so on. That's interesting because that's what they used to do in the old Hollywood studio system was tutor and, and uh, the actors in, in the various arts. Yes, well, I mean, I felt for their sake and for my sake, it was the only way, to, only way to do it. And, and still, for them, it, it was a big strain, I think. I mean, the one thing that I kept telling them is actually that filmmaking is very boring. And halfway through, they're saying, oh, it's really boring, isn't it? <laughs> and we're so tired. And, and that was the thing that I knew. I mean, the thing that I, that I wanted to capture with them, and I hope we weren't going to lose, was their natural energy and spontaneity. And that's very, very hard um, when you haven't got the discipline and training and technique and they had none, um, they only had that raw talent. And also because of the way I often shoot, um, it's an extra strain on actors because quite often my shots are very composed and controlled. So it isn't like, you know, well, let's just all improvise and, you know, and I'll wave the camera around. And so it, it was, I knew that would be an extra strain on them that I had to watch. And you know, I was willing to, and obviously willing to change my style if I was going to be killing their performance. How did you approach the choreography in the film in terms of the, for both cinematic and the dramatic value of it? Well, um, I, s when we s I selected David Atkins, the choreographer, quite early on, and um, he hadn't really done very much. Obviously, this is the first um, musical <laughs> film musical in Australia, so there weren't many experienced film choreographers, I mean, people who choreograph a TV variety shows or whatever. But I, what I was really looking for was somebody that one, had an understanding of, of young music, and secondly, um, had a real originality and a sense of humour and wit in the choreography, and that's what I said to David right from the beginning. I want, want humour and I don't want it to be pretty. And um, I mean, I was really delighted with his work. And wh the way we planned to do it was, um, but obviously we saw films together and discussed certain styles and things, but I still said I want something that's different, it's not really like anything I've seen before. The only thing that I ever showed him that was near to what I wanted was um, a Talking Heads clip, you know, the one with the... David Byrne. Yeah, yeah and the freeze of all his figures, and that was the nearest I'd ever seen to what I knew I wanted. But for me, as a filmmaker, uh, trying to articulate dance, I mean, was funny, but um, I've actually always been interested in in dance, theatre and music, so even though like, I knew how much I didn't know, I could at least say I, I have a feeling and an understanding. And he was great, he actually had a team of dancers and what he'd do with each piece of music is they'd have like a day of just trying things out and I'd come in the afternoon and they'd show me little things that they'd worked out and I'd say, yeah, that's the sort of thing I mean, no, I don't like that bit where you all go, or whatever. And, um, and then, you know, once we felt we really had a sense of it, then it was really like the last few, I'd just say, he'd say, come back in two days and we'll show you. And then after that, I mean, I mean, it was probably, I was, I still feel that I could have even done a bit, I mean, I wished I'd done a better job with the, realis the filmic realisation of the choreography. I think that, you know, you always finish a film thinking, I wish I could start again, I now know what I should have done. But, um, we had, I mean, obviously in the Australian film with very short shooting schedules, we had very little time. But everything was rehearsed and planned before we shot. And I had tapes of them, videotapes, which I ran at home. So I knew every dance absolutely off by heart. I could r do a floor plan of it. And then, and the director of photography and I went to rehearsals quite a lot and walked around and looked and, and with a camera operator as well. And then it was all planned. Um, I had, like, it was like an army procedure. My my floor plans and where the camera was going to be and so on. Mm -hmm. And obviously, from talking to a lot of people who'd shot dance, they advised me to, whenever I could, to try and shoot a, a couple of cameras at least at once, just because people get tired, <laughs> especially doing that sort of dance over and over. They were bruised and battered. You mentioned the sense of humor that you tried to put into the choreography. I think you succeeded particularly with 
some of the, the older characters in the, in the film, like the Nana character dancing with the rest of the, of the kids. Uh, yeah, but I mean, for me, also things like I want to live in a house with people throwing themselves on the floor and crawling along, to me, well, I find it quite amusing. It's not normal dance.